said that I would cover every issue, so I've come across another issue that some other people have also, and that is that the clutch has worn out. So I'm going to replace the clutch. The motor runs fine. A lot of the little extras on these motors do not seem to hold up very well. So I'll show you what I had to do to take it apart. Again, it was not that difficult. The replacement part is not that expensive, but I'm going to have to wait until it arrives. So I'll show you how easy it was to take apart, but I think all of us need to maybe take a moment and decide, is this the motor that I want to buy? For me, it works fine because I like taking things apart. I like new, learning new things, but it may not be for everybody out there. So. This will be a uh, short video on what you have to take apart to get to this uh, little clutch and replace it. I will admit I've never done this before, but it looks like it has six bolts. I'm hoping I don't have to take oh this, I mean this all should come off, but I'm hoping I can leave this intact and just take out those six. to gently pry this off. It does have some does have some movement. Okay. So this is the cooling tube I've heard tell of that. Remove the lower housing, and it appears I'm going to have to remove the lower engine cover. There's these two bolts here, and then it looks like some screws that'll have to come out, maybe. So I'll take those off. So I can leave that just as is. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off. I'll give everybody a view of the entire engine this way. One thing that happened early on is that uh, the kill switch, one of these just popped off. So that's something to be aware of. I'm going to go ahead and take this sound deadening material out. It really didn't help that much. So the engine is sitting upside down. Here's the exhaust system and basically it's just looks like copper and then it just ends here and then vents uh, down the bottom shaft. And this is the your water line for coolant and it appears to be copper. I've heard complaints but I think when a lot of these things rot and go bad it's using this engine in salt water. Okay, I've turned the motor right side up and if I look down in here, if I turn these are kind of cooling fans all through here so I'm guessing this is not the clutch area. Okay, so you can see where that inlet water line comes in and there's just a little clip in there that I can undo and then remove that copper tube. There we go. Okay, I'm back upside down as far as how the motor's sitting. This can't be the clutch, so it's got to be in here. I'm only seeing two bolts. Now, I put all the bolts back where they go. That way I can keep them straight as to what goes where. Goodness. I hate to force anything on this motor. There it goes.
these two are very tight and they were pretty snug coming all the way out. Looks like it may have some anti-seize grease or some kind of a sealer right there. So we'll see if I made a big mistake shortly. Okay, when I said I put the screws back in here, I should have realized this gasket's hiding two more of those connectors. So I'm trying to save this gasket, but it's already uh, split there, so I'm probably going to have to replace that somehow. I'll probably have to make one. Now I'm going to put these all back in so I know where they go. Alright, the moment of truth. kind of hung up on the little exhaust pipe that is coming off. Getting closer. And sure enough, here's the clutch, the clutch housing. I can confirm this is completely worn out. There's, this is like a brake pad. And when the engine, when the motor spins, this spring stretches, those brake pads in essence, catch on this and this is what turns the shaft going to the propeller. I'm very tempted as I had mentioned is to somehow take this there's even holes in it if I could screw it to that permanently in other words take this well it's it's not going to be possible but then the propeller would turn all the time the water pump would run all the time you would just have to shut it off when you went, you know, if you were going to touch bottom. Anyway, I'm going to order a new one and I'll let you know how that goes. To be honest, I have not used this motor all that much. The, the motor itself runs fine, but things like this, they just should have done a little better job. This should have more brake material on it. So I don't know if the replacement one that I find, if I can find one that will work better. Everything was, it's kind of easy to take apart. I've never done this before. So we'll see about getting it back together. But hopefully this is helpful. And, you know, if it helps you decide to or not to buy one. But I think this runs anywhere from, I don't know, $10, $12 to $20. I'm going to maybe order two so I have one to spare. Again, it wasn't that hard to take apart and get to this point. We'll see. I've heard that these are hard to get out, but I've got an uh, impact uh, wrench that probably should take that out pretty easily. Short update. I was able to remove these bolts pretty easily, actually. I didn't need an impact wrench. I just took two sockets, one on each side, worked against each other. The first one came out. Then that hole goes all the way through so you can t stick a screwdriver and spin it to where it goes all the way down and then the, the engine housing will rest against this and we'll see if I can get this one out easily. So I'm going to get it the right direction.
remember each one of these has a washer underneath it and on top of it. You can see it's completely worn down to the steel. There's no pad on there whatsoever. Nothing left. Anyway, that's the latest update on my adventure. I thought you'd be all be interested in knowing. I'm still not horribly disappointed because I enjoy learning new things and working on motor and things like that. So, even though I'm a novice at it, I think that's good because if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for when the parts are